Hey, this is John. Welcome back to Modern Old School Developer. In this episode, we're going to work on starting the Movie Manager application. Yeah. So I demoed this in the first video, so go check that out if you haven't seen it. But uh, in this video, what I want to do is set up the framework for the front and back ends of the application. This will make sure our development environment is properly configured and we are, you know, ready to write the code. I'm on GitHub right now. I will put a link to this repository in the description. This is where all of the code will live, you know, eventually after it's actually written. And I'm gonna have branches or tags for all of the different lessons so you can follow along with the video and see the actual result at that time. So let's go ahead and get started checking on our development environment. Need to open up a terminal. I'm gonna use VS Code. It has a built-in terminal, but whatever terminal you wanna use should be fine. Everything we're gonna do should work on Windows, Linux, and Mac, although you may have to consult some documentation on platform differences if you're not using what I'm using. I am developing on Windows using VS Code, but uh, I'm actually running all this on Linux. So, yeah, whatever, it's fine. Like I said, everything I'm doing will work in Windows, Mac, and Linux. I love cross-platform. It's very important to me. So let's get started checking out our developer requirements. First thing we need to make sure that we have is Python. So I'm going to run Python space dash capital V. Okay, uh, it might be Python 3 dash capital V. On Linux, it usually is Python 3. So there we go. I've got Python 3.9.2. Any version of Python newer than 3.6 should work for our purposes. We also need to make sure we have pip, so let's make sure pip is installed. So if I do pip space dash capital V, there we go, I have pip, that's great. And we need to make sure we've got the virtual environment module. So if I do python3 space dash m vn, make sure you get an error, it looks like this, so saying usage vn and vn error. So if I didn't have this module, if I you know, put some in here, you'll see it says no module named VM. <laughs> so if it says that for VM though, you don't have the VM module. So you'll need to install that. I'm not going to make directions on how to install Python, pip, or VM. They are all platform dependent, but there are lots of documentation and tutorials all over the internet and YouTube for how to do this for whatever system you're on right now. Again, this will work on Mac, Windows, and Linux. Okay, now that we know we have Python, let's uh, detour to the front end and make sure we have Node.js. To develop the front end, we need Node.js. So let's do node space dash lowercase v. You can see I've got version 16.13. That's a long-term stable release. So I am good on Node. Uh, if you have a version earlier than version 14, I would suggest you update to the latest long-term stable. But um, if you have version 14 or above, uh, everything we're going to do should work just fine. If you have Node, you will also have NPM and NPX. They come with Node by default, so you don't have to install those if you have Node installed. All right, um, if you use Yarn or some other Node package manager, I'm going to assume you know how to use those because I'm going to use npm and npx in this series. I'm not going to use yarn or anything else. Uh, so you'll have to you have to translate that for uh, whatever package manager you use. But again, if you're not using what comes with Node, I assume you know how to use that. All right. If you have all of your development dependencies, then we are ready to actually start making things. So why don't we start out with the front end? So like every tutorial, we're going to run npx and we're going to use the create-react app to build the React app. I'm going to build it in the front end directory and we are going to use TypeScript for this project. So I'm going to use dash dash template TypeScript. So go ahead and push enter on that and uh, I will come back when this is done installing. Okay, so here we are. We've got our project set up. So let's make sure that it runs. We sh it should, but let's make sure. So I'll go into the front end directory and do npm start. And hopefully shortly we will have our application started up. All 
There we go, we've got our React application started up. So this is the default create React app project. That means React is ready to go. Now we also wanna use Tailwind CSS for styling. So there's a couple more things we need to do to get Tailwind CSS set up. All right, so let's go over to the tailwindcss.com website. If you click on get started, take you to this page right here. If we go down to installation and look at framework guides, you'll see they have one for create React app. Over here on Tailwind CSS, you can see we did this, although we added the TypeScript template. So we're also gonna add uh, this. We need to add the Tailwind dependencies. So let's go ahead and copy this and go back to our terminal. And I will actually open another terminal. And then I'll go into front end and let's paste these things. Okay, there we go. We've got Tailwind installed and it's made our configuration file. So let's go back to the directions and you can see we need to configure our template paths. So we need to add the paths to all of the template files in our Tailwind config.js file. So let's go ahead and copy this line here and we'll go over to our movie manager and in our front end, in our tailwind config.js, here is the content. So just add that line right here. There we go. This will tell Tailwind what to look for when using its just-in-time compiler, which we'll talk about a little later. All right, what else we need to do? We need to add the actual Tailwind stuff to our index.css file. So let's go copy this right here. So let's go over to inside our source, inside index.css. We're gonna delete all of their CSS, all of the create React app CSS, and just leave the Tailwind stuff. So we'll have it just like this. All right, now it says we can do npm run start, and it should work. And if it does work, uh, we should be able to go. So let's go back to other terminal. Let's go ahead and stop this real quick and do npm start. And there we go, here is our create React app. So if I hit F12 on the developer tools and go to the inspector, uh, you can see, yeah, we've got a lot of index CSS stuff. So yeah, I believe we are all set up to work with Tailwind now. So we can even go test that real quick. Let's go ahead and clean up some of our project. Let's go ahead and go into uh, the public folder. What are we going to get rid of in the public folder? Maybe nothing. Yeah, I think it's fine for now. I'm going to change this to, say, movie manager for our title. And then we'll go over into this. We're going to get rid of the app CSS. We're going to get rid of app test. And we're going to get rid of the logo and the report web vitals and set up test, we're gonna delete all this stuff. And then if I go into index TSS, we're going to get rid of web vitals. We're gonna get rid of this. That all looks fine. And in app TSX, we're gonna get rid of the import there and app CSS. And we're just going to have this one div and we're going to have an h2 tag with class name of text, I don't know, 3xl. Hello, Tailwind. And let's see if that works. So if it does, there we go. Hello, Tailwind. And yes, that is the Tailwind style. You can see that um, it does have the Tailwind style. The font size and line height is there. So Tailwind is all set up for us. So there we go, we have made the framework for our movie manager application. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the terminal. We can go ahead and close our front end, don't need that just right now. And let's go into making our back end. Over here, uh, I want to make the back end application, or I wanna make the virtual environment to set up our back end. So we want to do python3 space dash m space vn, and now we're gonna call our virtual environment, virtual environment, just vn. It's a simple convention, you don't have to follow it, but it's, it's fine. All right, 
So then next thing we need to do is make sure we're actually using our virtual environment. To do that on Mac or Linux, we can do source space VM then activate. And you can see over here, we are in our virtual environment now. So the first thing I like to do inside on my virtual environment is make sure pip is up to date. So if I do pip space dash, you can see I've got pip 20.3.4. This is the one from the system package manager. So let's do pip space install space dash dash upgrade space pip. So now we will have the latest version of pip, which is 21.3.1. There we go. Latest version of pip. Next, we need to add the packages that we'll need for our backend. So let's do pip space install space. We're going to need fast API. We're going to need UVCorn and we're going to need PyYaml. I think that's all we need. So let's go ahead and hit enter here. All right, there we go. We've got all of our packages installed. So we should be good for the backend. So we're going to start off working on the front end, so I think we've got enough stuff to make the back end work. One thing I want to do before we're done with this video is clean up the Git repository because, as you can see, there's way too many files over here. So I want to make a git ignore file. So over here in the main thing, I want to make a file called .git ignore, and we're going to ignore the VM directory. We are also going to ignore node underscore modules and underscore underscore pycache underscore underscore. So if we see node modules or pycache anywhere or VM right here, we're going to ignore those things. So if I hit save, uh, you're going to see we only have 18 files changed now over our little git thing. One thing I forgot, I want to make sure it gets in there, is the Python requirements file. So let's go ahead and in our main directory, let's do pip space freeze angle bracket requirements.txt. And that's going to make the requirements.txt file, which will let us rebuild our virtual environment easier in the future. That is lesson one. So if I go over here, look, lesson one. So there we are, lesson one. All right, so if you wanted to get one of the lessons and uh, run them, you'll need to make sure you rebuild the virtual environment and get the node modules because those are not part of the Git repo. So let's see how you would do that. On the GitHub page for the Movie Manager repo, go to the code button, click on the HTTPS link and copy the link. Go over to our terminal. You'll need to have Git installed. You can type git space dash dash version if you get a number like two dot something, you should be fine. If not, you ought to install Git. Again, not going to show off how to do that. There are plenty of tutorials on how to install Git. Let's go ahead and clone that repo. So once you have Git, you can do Git clone and right click and we'll go ahead and paste this in here. There we go. There's Movie Manager. We can do Git checkout lesson one. There we go. So uh, we've got the requirements file, so let's recreate the virtual environment. We're going to do python3 space dash m vn vn. Then we're going to source vn bin activate. Now we're going to update pip, so pip install space dash dash upgrade pip. And finally, to install the requirements, we're going to do pip install space dash r requirements dot text and that will install all of the stuff for the virtual environment all right so in the front end again we don't have the node modules you need to make sure you have those because if i run mtm start it's not going to do anything so let's do npm install and once that is complete now we can do npm start and there we go and that's how you would get the get a version or a branch from GitHub and actually run that code on your system. Okay, so there we go. That is the first lesson, setting up the environment. The next lesson will be, you know, actually building something. But you've got to have the development environment framework before you can build anything. So 
I hope that you enjoyed today's lesson. If you did, give the video a thumbs up, maybe subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next episode where we will do something uh, different, more, additional. We'll do something. I will see you then.